Carnival, which refers to cannibals, dates back to Columbus's discovery of the New World of America. He mistakenly believed he had arrived in Asia's India. They mistook the natives for the descendants of Khan, the Mongol king, and dubbed them Kanivas. Columbus heard from neighboring Kaneva tribes that the Kanivas eat people, and as this rumor spread throughout Europe, carnival became a word that meant, cannibal. Of course, this rumor was later proven to be false. But, in the history of human evolution, were there no cannibals or groups of cannibals? If not, why not? Today's topic is cannibalism and cannibalism. Cannibalism is considered uncivilized in today's world, but it occurs frequently in human history. Dr. Sylvia Bellow of the Natural History Museum in London, England, discovered modern human remains dating back 14,700 years in a canyon in England's southwest. It was argued that cannibalism existed at the time based on the facts. She might be thinking, there must have been cannibalism since ancient times, but cannibalism was quite recent, even in the 1150s. Their dung fossils were discovered in the southwestern region of Colorado, USA, near the remains of Indians. Dr. Richard Mala discovered the myoglobin protein in human muscles in this dung fossil and published a paper titled Biochemical Evidence of Cannibalism in Nature in 2000. Announced by Furthermore, in 2013, a map depicting cannibalism in Jamestown, where Europeans settled in the United States in the early 17th century, was discovered. Dr. Doug Osley, an anthropologist, stated after discovering the horribly mangled skull of a 14-year-old girl at the Jamestown site. These marks show that people dug out the flesh for food, punctured the bones, and extracted the brains, he explained. According to documents describing the situation in Jamestown in 1609, food was completely depleted at the time, and immigrants ate dogs and cats, as well as rats and snakes and even shoe leather. People who couldn't bear the hunger dug up the graves and ate the dead who were buried there. Cannibalism appeared in the 20th century as well. To survive after Flight 571 in Uruguay crashed in the Andes Mountains in 1972, survivors ate the bodies of their dead colleagues. Can we conclude from the stories above that cannibals existed in the history of human evolution? According to Asian paleoanthropologist Professor Li Sang-hee, while cannibalism can occur for funeral rites, extreme situations, and socio-cultural reasons, there has never been a group of cannibals who eat people for nutrition in the history of human evolution. That's because cannibalism is extremely detrimental to survival evolutionarily. The first reason why cannibalism is harmful is straightforward. It is because hunting people with similar physical and intellectual abilities is several times more difficult than hunting rabbits or deer. It takes far less energy to hunt other animals than it does to hunt your own kind. So, even in the world of other animals other than humans, preying on their own kind is uncommon unless there are specific circumstances such as mating, breeding, or stress. This is similar to the second reason. Human flesh is nutritionally deficient. Dr. James Cole, an archaeologist at the University of Brighton in the United Kingdom, conducted an unusual study of nutritional analysis of human flesh in 2017. Even his paper's title, Assessing the Importance of Calories in Paleolithic Cannibalism, is unique. The thighs are 13,350 kilocalories, the upper arm is 7,450 kilocalories, the lower leg is 1,660 kilocalories, the heart is 650 kilocalories, the liver is 2,570 kilocalories, the kidneys are 380 kilocalories, the lungs are 1,600 kilocalories, the large and small intestines are 1260, the skin is 10,280 kilocalories, and the brain and spinal cord are 2,700 kilocalories, according to the thesis. It is estimated to be between 120,000 and 140,000 kcal. Some might call it a calorie-laden burger. However, Dr. James Paul said, one human flesh is only enough to sustain 25 men for half a day, while the same number of people can survive for two months with just one mammoth with 3.6 million kilocalories of muscle. Dr. Cole argued that no group in the history of human evolution would have routinely practiced cannibalism for nutritional supplementation, and that the majority of cannibalism found in fossils was for social and cultural reasons such as religion or funeral rites. 
Finally, disease is the most serious disadvantage of cannibalism. Within the same species, viruses, bacteria, and parasites are much easier to infect. A virus in a bat, for example, requires a certain amount of mutation in the viral gene to infect a human, but humans are infected immediately even if the virus does not mutate. In other words, preying on the same species quickly leads to disease infection. This is the subject of an intriguing study. Dr. Milland of India had experiment participants smell the excrement of 13 mammals, including humans, pigs, and cows, and then determined which excrement odor was the most objectionable. The end result was truly amazing. Unsurprisingly, humans are the most repulsed by the smell of human feces. Pig feces were the second most disgusting, as they shared various parasites with humans, and feces from animals with fewer parasites that infect humans, such as cows, were less disgusting. As a result, evolutionary biologists. Because excreta contain the most parasitic organisms that can infect humans, humans instinctively find the smell of human excrement the most repulsive, explaining why they avoid disease infection. Even if this is true for excrement, eating meat from the same species, such as brains or muscles, increases the risk of disease infection, and as a result, cannibal groups that routinely practice cannibalism struggle to survive in the natural world. There is an example of such cannibalism resulting in disease. The Kuru disease astounded many people in the 1950s. A primitive tribe known as the Four lived in Papua New Guinea, and in the 1950s, a strange disease spread throughout the tribe. People suffering from this disease are unable to stand due to loosened muscles, are unable to eat, shiver violently, and eventually die of pneumonia. At the time, people named this disease, Kuru, which means, the body trembles, and it primarily affected women. Many medical scientists attempted to discover the cause of this disease at the time, but they were unsuccessful. Then, in 1957, Daniel Gaidasak, an American pediatrician, discovered that this disease was caused by cannibalism. When a person died at the time, the four people severed the dead person's hands and feet, removed the brain and organs, and held a bizarre funeral in which the men ate the flesh and the women mostly ate the brain and organs. A pathogenic substance known as prion causes Kuru disease in the dead. Even among tribe members, women who cared for the dead or ate the brains were more likely to contract Kuru. Prion is a protein that destroys brain cells. It is just a protein with no DNA or RNA, but it is a scary guy who encroaches on tomorrow by transforming normal proteins around it into pathogenic proteins, similar to Thanos mind control. As a result, Kuru disease exists as a single example of how vulnerable cannibalism is to disease infection, and if a group of cannibals practiced cannibalism on a regular basis, they would have already been infected. Disease will wipe out everything. The answer to the question, why not eat people, is, of course, no. Ethical, social, and cultural approaches are fine, but don't they look a little different when viewed through the lens of science? It was an odd RESERCH that tells you about science you've been curious about at least once. If you enjoyed watching, please subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.